Hi, boys and girls. Welcome back to Sabbath class. I'm so glad that you were able to join me today. Uh, first, let's start off with prayer. Please uh, close your eyes, bow your heads, and fold your arms. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for all your wonderful blessings. Thank you for having us here today, dear Lord, to learn more about you. Thank you for uh, allowing us to, even though we're at home, that we're able to still join together. Uh, please bless every home that is represented here. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so first of all, I wanted to share with you guys my Bible verse. God does not show favoritism, but accepts from every nation the one who fears them and does right and does what is right. Acts 10, 34, 35. And I have written in the back, just in case you guys can see it and you guys can read it. Uh, let me see. God does not show favoritism, but accepts from every nation the one who fears him and does what is right. Acts 10, 34, 35. Well, boys and girls, as you know, times are hard right now uh, with this whole pandemic that is going on. Um, in the world, so it's hard to visit uh, people, friends, and family. Uh, planes aren't flying much. Trains aren't moving these days, so it's hard to go even visit someone unless you're driving, but if you have a friend or a family that lives in another state or another country, you can't uh, go visit them. You'd have to just make phone calls or even just do a Zoom phone call, just kind of like what we do these days where we're Zooming on uh meetings and we're zooming for groups life groups like uh some of you guys do the kids life group so you do through zoom and that's how many people are now communicating uh but but i'm so happy i was able to get one of my friends here today he's traveled from far 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 away so i want you guys to uh welcome him Listen to him so you guys can learn so much about what he's going to share his words today. So without uh, any more introduction, I'm going to bring him in, all right? Boys and girls, this is my friend Barnabas. Barnabas, thank you so much for joining us on short time and short notice. I am so happy that you can be here for an interview. But more importantly, Barnabas, I know right now times are so tough. Um, but I'm glad that you were able to fly in and see us. Uh, so thank you for coming in again, Barnabas. But Barnabas, before uh, anything, I want to tell uh, about what we're talking to our audience. They will be following along and doing some actions every time they hear certain words. That's fun. So boys and girls, Jesse and Daniela will also be following along. So every time you hear the words, Barnabas or Paul, you will raise your hands up in the air. When you hear believers, we are put our thumbs and fingertips together to make a mouth and you open and close them as if they were talking. Every time you hear the words Antioch, you put your fingertips together like a roof of a house. So without further ado, Barnabas, Tell me a little bit about yourself. I am a Christian who believes in Jesus Christ as the Messiah and my Savior. Okay. Barnabas, I know a lot has happened since Jesus went back to heaven and the Holy Spirit came at Pentecost. Can you tell me a little bit about what is happening? Yes. Every day new people are accepting the good news about Jesus. But many new believers are moving away from Jerusalem. It is becoming dangerous for believers to remain here. I hear that Saul and other Jewish leaders are putting people in prison, beating them, and sometimes putting them to death. Is this true? Yes, it's true. As the believers move away, they are so full of joy that comes from knowing Jesus that they just can't st stop talking about him. The news of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection is spreading everywhere. So you're telling me that your persecutors aren't too happy. I'm sure they don't want anyone talking about Jesus. You are correct. They are not happy. Some of the new believers 
moved here to Antioch. There is a large Jewish community and many Gentiles. These are people who are not Jewish and they also live in this place. I hear that Antioch is an important city and very beautiful. Mm -hmm. But I also hear that they're very wicked, yes. dedicated to heathen gods. Is this true? Yes. When the believers moved here to Antioch, they began to tell their neighbors about the wonderful gospel. They told everybody, Jews and Gentiles, this was something different. The Lord blessed them, and many Gentiles have joined the believers. The news, the news about these new converts spread back to apostles, apostles, and other believers in Jerusalem. Some of the church leaders there were worried. They were not too sure that God wanted everyone to hear the good news. After all, the Jews are God's uh, chosen people. So I hear the leaders ask you to travel to Antioch and find out what was happening. Is this correct? Yep, that's correct. When I arrived, I saw that the believers here have truly been blessed by the Lord. They really do understand the grace of God. I am so happy. I am encouraging the believers to remain true to the Lord and to continue telling others about Jesus. As a result, many are becoming followers of Jesus. When you saw all of this, did you think to yourself, I'm going to need some help? Of course, I needed help. I thought about Saul and how he had changed after meeting Jesus on the road to Damascus. He even had a new name. Now he is called Paul. Was it easy to find Paul? Where did you find him? It took some time to find him, but I found him in the city of Tarsus. Isn't this where Paul was born? Yes, it is. When I found Paul, there was Paul teaching others about Jesus. Paul agreed to come back to Antioch with me, and we began working together to spread the good news. Wow. Uh, how long have you guys been working together? We have been working together for about a year. I hear that many people, both Jews and Gentiles, have accepted Jesus as the Lord. Yes, that is correct. We now have a new name. Because of all the believers talk about Christ, we are called Christians. I have heard rumors that the name is spreading to other places as well. I think it is a good name. It tells everyone what we believe in. I am glad Paul and I have become friends. I am glad we are teaching the Gentiles the good news about Christ. How about you? Are you telling others about him? Well, boys and girls, wow, Barnabas, man, he taught us a lot. He he sure knows a lot. I'm hope, hope, Hopefully we can have him back another day to continue teaching us about uh, what he did with Paul and all his teachings to the Gentiles and the uh, Jews. So... Now I'm going to ask you some questions to see if you paid attention. Are you guys ready? What? And Jesse and Daniela will, hear, will be here following along with us. Why did the believers begin to move away from Jerusalem? Who can tell me? Jesse? Because they were getting persecuted. Good job. He was listening. Yes, because they were being persecuted. What was so special about the believers who moved to Antioch? Uh, they were Christians. They liked to talk to everyone about Jesus. They did not just talk to the Jews. They talked also to the Gentiles. They spoke to everyone to get the good news out. Why did Barnabas ask Paul to come to Antioch? Yes, to help them because so many people wanted to learn about Jesus and Barnabas needed help to reach them. What were the believers first called in Antioch? Christians. Christians, good job. Paul and Barnabas discovered that God's grace is freely available to everyone. And that's what our message says. Say it with me. God does not show favoritism, but accepts from every nation the one who fears him and does what is right. 
Acts 10, 34, 35. But now for some fun. To keep these actions going, now I'm going to give you guys some actions to go along with our memory verse. So let's get ready. Are you guys ready? Okay. God, and we point upwards. Good job. Does not, we shake our heads, show favoritism. And pointing as if choosing someone, but accepts, and you beckon somebody, which you're calling. From every nation, we stretch our arms wide. The one who fears them, we fold our hands as if in prayer. And does what? Make a fist. Is right. Both hands put in, but... Keep the index finger pointing, bounce right hand on left, so like this. And then Acts 10, 34, 35, our palms together, then open. Good job, boys and girls. Let's do it one more time and see if we got it. Ready? God, pointing upwards, does not, shaking your head, point to show favoritism, but accepts, and you beckon, from every nation, and we stretch our arms wide. The one who fears them, hold hands as if in prayer, and does what is right. We make a fist with both hands, keeping our index fingers pointing, and bounce right hand on left. Acts 10, 34, 35, palms together, then open. Good job, guys. Now let's try it our last time without me telling you the, the actions. Ready? God does not show favoritism, but accepts from every nation the one who fears him and does what is right. Acts 10, 34, 35. So boys and girls, that was our Bible, our memory verse for this, uh, for today. I want to thank you guys for being here today. I, um, hopefully you guys will come back next week and you guys can join us again for another fun-filled Sabbath. Other than that, boys and girls, thank you again for being here with us. And I want to wish you guys a restful and happy Sabbath. Bye! Bye.